And welcome to Jay Moore's new JBiz Entrepreneur Series featuring accomplished entrepreneurs from a variety of industries throughout the greater Baltimore region. I'm Gary Stein. I'll be your host. And the JBiz Entrepreneur Series is sponsored by Nemphos Brow, the Mid-Atlantic's leading boutique corporate law firm. And who better to kick us off as I take off my glasses <laughs> is George Nemphos, the founding member of Nemphos Brow. First of all, thanks for coming in and doing this and being our sponsor. It's awesome. Oh, no. Absolutely my pleasure. Uh, very much. Uh, excited about the opportunity and you know it's something that's near and dear to the heart absolutely and you know we're going to talk about what your law firm does as far as entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs are concerned but I wanted to get your story a little bit first because you're an entrepreneur and not only are you an entrepreneur but you're from a family of entrepreneurs so it's kind of in your blood a little bit <laughs> yeah absolutely um, my father was an entrepreneur my grandfathers on both sides of the family are entrepreneurs uh, you know we uh, we are industrious people with a last name like Nemphos, you gotta be. Uh, you know, my father was a CPA, but had the calling himself and uh, was involved in the automobile industry, real estate, restaurants, sportswear, you name it. Uh, grandfather, you know, owned a. Uh, uh, Owned a diner in East Baltimore for 40 plus years, mm. uh, as well as other businesses. Uh, my other side of the family, my grandfather, after a stint on Broadway, ended up buying a uh, Hallmark card store back in the early 50s. And literally up until the day he passed away, you know, ran and operated that Hallmark store. And then when you went to college at Boston University, you were a broadcast major, basically. Um, how did you get from broadcast studies to law? <laughs> well, you know, it, it, when you're doing broadcast journalism, you, you develop a nose for things and you develop the skill set that, quite frankly, a good lawyer who wants to help their client Needs that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're able to work with the client and draw out of them what they really want to accomplish and help them formulate how they're going to get there by talking and drawing information out of them. You know, I, I really enjoyed studying broadcast and journalism, did some of it early on, um, but found that reporting on the story was not as much fun as being a part of the story and mm -hmm. helping the story develop in a manner which had an end result that was what your client wanted or, or was successful. Before Nemphos Brow, you were um, working for an international law firm. You had also started actually at a college at a smaller law firm. Tell us a little bit about your career before your current Sure, company. sure, sure. So uh, I graduated from University of Baltimore School of Law, mm -hmm. and upon graduation, I ended up going to work for a small uh, law firm in Greenbelt, Maryland, uh, while I attended uh, night school for a master's down at Georgetown. And about a year and a half into that, I ended up going actually as part of an in-house counsel team to a startup. Uh, had the entrepreneurial bug and wanted to see what it was like from the inside to get to know, you know, the day-to-day -day issues and uh, trials and tribulations of these entrepreneurs. Uh, it was a agritech slash energy-based company uh, in Columbia, Maryland. Uh, it was an exciting time. It was really unusual and interesting. Uh, but, you know, after being there for about a year and a half, uh, realized that like most of these startups, uh, you know, wasn't going as fast or where it should. And I ended up actually accepting a job with uh, what is now a one of the biggest law firms in the world. Uh, back then, it was a local law firm or a regional law firm, if you will. And I was a, actually part of the venture capital, private equity, entrepreneur legal team, mm, working hand in hand with entrepreneurs and their investors and really rolling up my sleeves uh, alongside an amazing mentor. Uh, with an opportunity to get to know a variety of different uh, industries and people that got bit by the entrepreneurial bug that, you know, I want to go make it myself and do something new. Mm -hmm. How did you meet your partner, Tim Brown? So Tim and I uh, have been working together since probably around 2005. So we've been together for almost 15 years. Um, Tim actually came out of a uh, Governor Ehrlich's office. Mm. Um, he was working with the Governor Ehrlich. Uh, before that, he was actually part of DOJ uh, management. Um, 
He was always entrepreneurial. Um, he really liked to roll up his sleeves when he was working on that side of things uh, and trying to help businesses in the state of Maryland grow and develop and find new ways to uh, employ more people in the state of Maryland and to uh, be successful. So another kindred spirit uh, had gone through with me with all the big firm stuff. Uh, nothing the matter with it. It's just it was not totally for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that's because we wanted to do something on our own and create something new. Well, and not only on your own and new, but, and you've said this before, you wanted to create something different. What difference did you want to try to create as far as a law firm? So for us, we looked at the situation after being around all these entrepreneurs and all these individuals with these amazing ideas and this drive that we felt that there was an opportunity to actually serve them better, to actually help them succeed on their terms in a manner that was not, um, for lack of better words, uh, problematic. So we wanted the, uh, an individual to come to us and feel like they were getting a partner. They wanted, they had a relationship. You know, we go around saying quite frequently, if you want the equivalent of somebody who's just going to come in and do one item, uh, be an electrician or be a plumber or, you know, be the bricklayer. They're great individuals. They do amazing job, but that's what they do. And they don't tend to see the big picture when you're doing what we do. So we wanted people to come in and feel like I'm going to a firm that is a boutique that is focused on my end result. And they are invested in the relationship in order to figure out the best way possible to get mm -hmm. the end result that they could get. So when you say the word boutique, what does that mean exactly? Yeah, that's a good question. A lot of people ask that question because it means a lot of things to mm -hmm. different people. For us, what it means is, is it's, a, it's an atmosphere in which it's focused. Uh, we're focused on corporate business. Um, it's an atmosphere in which a client can come in and feel the energy is focused on success for them. You know, whether you believe in karma, feng shui, whatever. <laughs> I believe in it all. There you go. <laughs> um, we want a client to walk in and feel a positive energy right from the get-go. That this is a place to come and find out and f find out and find a way to do the business that they want to do and have the success that they want to have. You know, frequently when any of us go somewhere in which it's a big shop, uh, regardless what it is, a big grocery store, a big accounting firm, a big law firm, uh, a big construction company, they're great. They all have their place and they all do a fantastic job, but they're not right for everyone. And specifically, an entrepreneur can feel like they get lost in those situations. They can feel like they're just one more tick on the, on the paper, mm -hmm. one more click on the meter. For us, they're our partners. They're our friends. They are people that have come to us to entrust with us their dreams. And we want to be a part of that. And we want to do what we can to help them make it to where they want to go. The road may not always be straight. Mm -hmm. The road may not always be short. But we're going to be there side by side with them. I mean, we view it as proactive representation and counseling rather than reactive. Mm -hmm. We are looking for an, uh, the clientele to feel like we're there side by side. We are going to do what we can to make it easier for them, either by heading off traps in the future or talking with them about, you know, and advising them about how things should work. Mm -hmm. There are many stages to being an entrepreneur when you're thinking of an idea to do a company. You know, there's the formation, there's perhaps a venture capital acquisition, maybe later on down the line if you're successful, acquisitions and mergers, et cetera, and many more steps along the Absolutely. line. Um, do they need to come to you at formation? Or do you have clients that maybe had seen someone else and it wasn't working and they come to you to maybe solve a problem? That's, that's an excellent question. And yes, we do actually get both. Um, you know, we've actually developed also a really good reputation for taking thorny, um, sticky, entangled 
messes, you know, and untangling them and providing some simplistic order to what their, you know, to what their operations are. Um, they may have seen multiple attorneys over the course of their of their successes and failures. Uh, and they've taken their advice as they probably should. And what happens is over time, it's not atypical to find that one problem has been solved another problem's been solved and then another piece was solved but nobody took the time to figure out what the holistic approach should be so that way there wasn't the fourth problem to pop up and we've become very adept at taking a look at these structures taking a look in way which individuals are operating their businesses and trying to assist them with uncomplicating Mm -hmm. them complexity sometimes is necessary. That's just the way the law works. God knows we all know that's the way the tax code works. <laughs> but it shouldn't be what's running your business at the end of the day. Your structure and your complexity should match up with your business goals. So to the extent that the structure and complexity has overtaken your business, you can't do business. And you'd be quite shocked how frequently that occurs because – a client may have seen multiple lawyers over the course of their you know, business life. They may have dealt with a quick issue at one point and then had it fixed and said, all right, I'm just not bothering with the rest. So we've gotten known for also being able to step in, work hand in hand to untangle the mess, move it forward in a more simplistic manner with the whole goal being, you know, so that the, the structure doesn't rule the business. Mm-hmm. The business needs to rule the structure common and important characteristics of entrepreneurs, both in yourself and in entrepreneurs that you work with. What do you think are maybe the two or three most important characteristics that an entrepreneur should have? You know, I think the very first one is belief. You got to believe in yourself and you've got to believe in what you're trying to do. No matter what it is, you've got to be able to sit back or look in the mirror and know that you can do it. You have to, because without that, you're going to second guess everything you do and you're not going to make it through. You know, every business has a different stage, a different part of its life cycle. And while one type of entrepreneur is um, necessary for one part of the uh, life cycle, a different type of entrepreneur may be needed for the next part of the life cycle. You know, being an entrepreneur is difficult enough to add additional layers of pain and suffering onto it. So you do also need to be self-aware as an entrepreneur. You need to know when you have taken your business to the point that you can take it to. It doesn't mean you step out. It doesn't mean you leave. It just means this is the time to get a different type of help. And it could be, hey, I've been running this thing for five years on my own and I've gotten it as far as I can get it to or I've got an opportunity to branch off. It may, you know, it may be time to consider what your management team and what your business advisory unit needs to encompass so that way you can move on. Flexibility always comes into play with entrepreneurship, and it's not something that's ingrained in each one of us. It is generally taught either through the environment that you grew up in, the business that you're in, but it's something that you develop over time. Um, you know, we as... We as humans, we as business people, we see our goal, we want to achieve our goal, and we're steadfast in trying to obtain it. It is very difficult to turn left after you've turned right. So you need to have the ability to be self-reflective at, you know, as you've gone down the path so that way you can maybe make the decision that it's time to bring in somebody else, it's time to change tactics, and what does that mean? So, yeah, I, I would probably say those are the, the key points. So on that note, let's talk about bedside manner, as it were, for just a minute. When you have to deliver some critical evaluation of where the entrepreneur is, right, he, may or, he or she may or may not be in a great place and may need that critical evaluation, how difficult is that to do? And how often, what is the reaction of entrepreneurs when they receive this evaluation? You know, that, that, <laughs> you know that's all over the map. The reaction could be all over the map, believe you me. But I will say this, um, you know, look, it's a difficult situation. Mm-hmm. Um, by the time it gets to me, 
if it's a new client and I'm unraveling something sticky and I wasn't there from the beginning, and if I start to see it or some member of my team starts to see it, chances are highly probable that somebody else within the organization is starting to see it or other advisors have started to see it. So first and foremost, I would say, you know, you have to take a step back before you start this conversation and just remember who the person is, you know, what stage are they, what stage is the company at? Is this the founder? And is this the person that is, you know, it was their baby, their baby. And now you're telling them it's time to let the baby fly the nest time to marry off your kid and bring somebody else into work. It's a very sensitive subject and it should be. And you know what? You need to be respectful of that. Absolutely. And a lot of times these clients are become very close with our team because we've been there with them all along or we've gotten involved with them at a time in which they needed the guidance that we could provide. So you look at it from a very respectful standpoint. The second thing is, is that it's not uh, atypical to first suggest, hey, maybe we need to get some coaching. Maybe you need to get some coaching. That's you know, an interesting step to take because sometimes the coaching actually helps them personally reflect upon their best skill set and they realize, hey, I'm the founder, I'm the visionary. I really don't want to deal with this aspect and I shouldn't be dealing with this aspect. So you can hopefully help guide them or, or get the staff and team around them to guide them to that realization doesn't mean they're not in charge at the end of the day or it's not their baby still it just means there's somebody else helping run the show um you know that goes to the ability to to be flexible and self-reflective and you know it's interesting you see quite frequently with entrepreneurs that have been very successful in the past in other endeavors a lot of times they think it translates right back over to the next one and you know, sometimes it sometimes does. it does. Sometimes and some, it you know, sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, knowing when to step out and step aside is it's very painful. It's very traumatic. It needs to be dealt with in a very respectful manner by everybody involved. But if you do it in that manner, you can help them, you know, find that person or persons to help take their dream to the next level. And in doing so, they succeed and they get to the next level and maybe the next time they do it they all the way through without a problem and we've seen that too why should an entrepreneur call you (laughs) why should an entrepreneur well an entrepreneur should call me if they're looking for a legal partner if they're just looking for somebody to step in fix this advise on that little piece and then goodbye we're probably not the shop happy to do it no one likes really to refuse work but it's really not who we are who we are would be i would have to boil it down to is we're a legal business partner our goal is to make it so the law and the legal aspects of the pieces of their business work combined with the with the economic side to help drive the business legal should be a uh, influencer of positive growth for the business. It shouldn't be a hindrance. So we spend an, a real long time learning people's businesses, learning what their goals are, and trying to help them structure a path forward and to help them move down that road. So we've done work with, frankly, people who call you know, they just, hey, I just quit my job and I'm starting up a company. Can you form it for me? Sure. Let, done. That's easy. Let's, you know, let's get together and talk about next moves and strategy and what I'm trying to do and what I need to think through. And and so we're there at the very beginning for the planning mm-hmm. stage and we help them grow and they're doing, they, they've grown. We've got a client right now who's grown and is in that scenario and is now doing international deals with huge corporations for their development of their software and their applications. We get phone calls from entrepreneurs who are, you know, second, third time entrepreneurs and they're like, I want to do it again. And they're unique because they've seen the good, the bad and the ugly and they're still, still hooked. Go. Yeah. <laughs> and they're fun. Right. They're fun. I guess lastly, I mean, you know, I do believe that any advisor you pick, you got to have a good personality, ma- personality match. Um, we try to be 
fun. I mean, I know that sounds weird. But no, I think you do a pretty good job, actually. Thank you. <laughs> no, but we do. We try to be fun. We do let our personalities show. Uh, we try to be gregarious. We try to make our clients feel like we have not only a vested interest in what they're doing, but that, you know, we're people. Mm-hmm. And we're here to be side by side with them. And as they're succeeding, we're succeeding. As they're failing, we feel it, too. Two-part question, and this will be the final one. Sure. What are you passionate about, and why do you get up in the morning? <laughs> well, I'm going to step outside the legal field to say what I'm passionate about, obviously, is my family. I've got two great kids, a wonderful wife. Uh, born in, I was born in, uh, and raised around here. Uh, you know, families from East Baltimore moved out to Ellicott City. You know, I love Maryland. Uh, I think we're one of the most unique states in the country with so much to offer and so much talent and so much potential. Um, so I'm very passionate about that as well as the sports teams. Um, what gets me up in the morning, every day is different. Yeah, Everything like is different and it's fun. And the people I work with are fantastic. And the clients we have, they're, they're they're not always a joy, but they're, <laughs> <laughs> but they really are fun to work with, and their energy and there's vibrance in in their eyes and and in their passion, and it's infectious. It's just infectious. So it makes it easy to go every day to the office and work with somebody new and somebody different. And you know what better way to start your day than to know that you're actually trying to help somebody achieve their goals. George, again, thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming in and being a part of our program. No, thank you very much. Awesome. That's George Nemphos, the founding member, along with Tim Brow of Nemphos Brow, uh, one of the leading, if not the leading, mid-Atlantic boutique corporate law firm. I'm Gary Stein. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Jay Moore's J-Biz Entrepreneur Series.